How's it going? I'm Anthony Todd. Today I'm going to show you how to do this problem where you have a spring on an incline plane with a block that's moving either freely down the uh, plane or it's just going to come to a complete stop. Now we're going to do this algebraically today. So the problem states this. A spring with a constant K is allowed to fall down an incline plane as shown below. After the block is released and allowed to come to a complete stop. So obviously the spring system is going to do something. It's going to fall down. It's going to displace itself. And then eventually the spring is going to kind of stop. So the question is, write an equation for the displacement D of the spring. So how far does the spring displace itself after it's come to a complete stop? Okay. Well, the first thing we need to do is draw the free body diagram. I'm going to draw this dot diagram for this block. In this situation, this block does have some mass times gravity. It does have a normal force in. And there actually is a force that's pulling this object back up the ramp. And that's actually the force of the spring. So this force is applying uh, a, f uh, a force up the ramp that's going to keep this block staying still. This is, this is interesting because when it says come to a complete stop, that means the acceleration in the system, or I should say the acceleration uh, parallel to the ramp needs to be zero. Okay, So the system is not going to move. All right. So now um, we need to understand that there has to be something pulling this object down the ramp. Well, that's actually the gravitational component of this mg right here. So notice um, you have done this before with incline planes. So I'm going to kind of pull this block out here and make it a little bit bigger for the people viewing. And this is my normal force. This right here, this fg, is a component of gravity. It's not really there. Um, but we need to find it because we need to find the forces that are going down the ramp. So if this is angle theta, that means this angle here has to be theta. So solving for this component of gravity, you have mg, so you have your, hypo oh, your hypotenuse and your opposite. So that's going to give us this. The force of gravity that's pulling parallel to the ramp will just be mg sine of theta. Okay. So we know this component of gravity pulling down the ramp. And we know that the force in a spring is just equal to negative kx. And k is the constant, and x is just the amount it's displaced. Well, in this situation, we have this component of gravity. So the force of gravity, the component of gravity, um, is equal to the force being provided by the spring. Because what this means is, in order for us to actually have this, f equals ma, that means all of our forces have to equal zero. So that means the force of gravity pulling down, or the component of it, has to equal the spring force pulling back. So we can actually now plug in these variables, and we can solve for our distance here. So in this case, we have mg sine of theta is equal to um, negative kx. It was a negative over here. When it hops over here, it becomes positive. So you have k, and we're going to use d, because in this case, our x will be equal to our distance, so how far it's falling. All right, and all you have to do is solve for that d. And that equals mg sine of theta divided by k will be the total displacement of that object. All right. And that's if it's allowed to come to a complete stop. So if it's allowed to come to a stop, it's allowed. Okay, so this is the object, so this is the spring was allowed to fall down and just stop. Now, the other question is, what happens if the spring is not allowed to stop? Okay. So now you have a situation where the spring and the block system is taken to the top of this ramp and it's allowed to fall down the ramp. So the question is, what is this maximum displacement? So how far does it really stretch itself? So I used the same image, um, but obviously we know that this D is going to be a little bit down here. It's going to really stretch itself out. So the question is, well, how far does it do that? All right. So now, we're not going to really analyze this with forces in this situation. We're actually going to look at it with energy. At the very, very top in this block system, this block has what we call potential energy, so gravitational potential energy, which is just going to be mass times gravity times height. And at the very, very bottom, so as this block reaches the bottom, all of this energy has been transferred into what we call the energy of a spring, so the potential energy of a spring. And that is equal to 1 half kx squared. So if we know the energy here and here, we can set these two situations equal to each other. So the potential energy is equal to the potential energy in the spring. So you get mass times gravity times height 
is equal to one half k, now in this situation, d will be equal to x and vice versa. So I'm gonna solve for d, and that is gonna be d uh, squared. Now, right here, this height component um, is something that we need to find out because we don't really know the height that it's falling. So I'm gonna pull this triangle out right here. So this height will be proportional to the distance that this object falls down the ramp. So we're gonna have something like this. So the further this object falls down the ramp, makes sense, the greater this height component will be. So how can we solve for that? So we're gonna look for this distance D right here. And we know that we have the height so we got to solve for that. Well, how can we solve for this? Well, you have the opposite over the hypotenuse. Well, that's just going to be sine. So remember, Sokotoa. So opposite over hypotenuse. And we can actually solve for our h here. In this case, h will be equal to sine theta times some distance d. So we now know that where we have an h, I can just take this and plug it in right there. So I now have m times gravity. So instead of h, I'm going to type in sine theta times d is equal to um, 1 half kd squared. And that distance, like I said, is just how far the spring will displace itself. And we can obviously see here that some things cancel out. There's a d over here, and that will cancel out the square. And so now solving for our distance here, you get 2mg sine of theta divided by k. And that will tell us the actual distance that this object will fall. So this will be the maximum, so this is the maximum displacement. So this will be how far this block would travel down the, down the ramp with the spring right before having to come back past equilibrium and back to the top. Okay. So I hope this tutorial helped, and if so, give me a thumbs up and a like, and subscribe for more physics content, and thank you for watching. Have a great day.